morning everyone. Are we blessed to be in this house of the Lord this morning? Amen. 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 How many of us believe that we are blessed? Amen. Are we blessed? Yes. Amen. And how many of us believe that God is our rewarder? Amen. So the question I want to ask you this morning is, what are we asking for? What are you asking for? What am I asking for? And it basically speaks to what is the motivation for your asking? You see, many of us, uh, we, we are looking for things, we, we need things. Normally the time that we need things is the time that we sort of like in a sense we're desperate for. We normally are reaching out to God because we don't have food in the house. So now we're calling on the name of the Lord and we're saying, Lord, please supply our needs, supply us our food. We don't have money for whatever it may be and we're calling out on the Lord. But we need to understand that when we say that God is our rewarder, that God is our rewarder as, as a part, everyday part of our life. God is not just a rewarder for when we need things, but God is the rewarder of everything that we experience in our lives. Whether it is what we need, or whether it is just because we live our lives, but we cannot live our lives away from God. We need to live our lives with God each and every day of our lives. God needs to be that part of our lives that is like we're breathing air. That is who God needs to be for us each and every day of our lives. So when I ask the question of what are we asking for from God, we need to understand what is that motivation? Why are we asking? And so when we ask God for a house, when we ask God for that, are we thinking about that we can possibly have a home song in that house? When we ask God for a car, do we think that we can possibly transport some people to church? Amen. When we ask God for money, do we think that we can use of that money to pay towards the church rental or for the broadcasting of the gospel over TV and over radio? When we ask God for food, do we ask thinking that we can help others, that we can give food to other people? When we ask God for clothing, for anything like that, do we think that we can bless our pastor maybe, or that, um, so that he can do good when he brings the word? What is our motivation? And I want you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, because once again, Matthew chapter 6, in verse 33, it speaks about what our motivation needs to be. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, it says, But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall, shall be added to you. It's not maybe God will think about it, Maybe God will consider it depending on how you've been or how you've lived or what you've done and said to know. It shall be added to you. But in addition to Matthew 6 verse 33, I want you to go back just a little bit to verse 25 and 26. Verse 25 and 26 it says, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. 
Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Our heavenly Father feeds us. And then if we move on to verse 31, verse 32, it says, Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. Amen. And that is where verse 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. Amen. And then all these other things shall, 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 shall be added to you. Amen. It is a promise. Amen. And you can stand on the promises of God. So, some key things that you need to know to receive these promises of God in Matthew chapter 7 verse 8. And I want to set the tone of how I'm going to end. It says, for everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who asks, receives. Have you asked? And what has been the motivation? Then it says, he who seeks, finds. So have you just sought once or twice? You must seek and you will find. Amen. And to him who knocks, it will be open. If you're driving in your car and you hear a knocking noise coming from some, some way, what are you going to do? You're going to stop and you're going to go look. Amen. Amen. So too, when it comes to asking of God, that when you knock, you must keep knocking. You must keep knocking. And it says it will be opened. I want to take you now to a part in the Bible where it talks about someone who had the correct way of asking of God. Turn with me to 1 Kings chapter 3. 1 Kings chapter 3 and um, it basically speaks about Solomon, King Solomon and we all we all know if we speak about Solomon then immediately to our minds come the wisdom of Solomon yeah? so I just want to so we're going to just look at um, from verse 3 to about verse 13. I'm, I'm just going to mention some things here that you can follow as we as we go along. So in verse in verse 3, and I want to read verse 3, it says that Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of David his father, only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places. Key here is Solomon loved the Lord. That is where everything starts. We must love the Lord. When we love the Lord, it opens our hearts to so many things that God wants to give us. Amen. Amen. So, he loved the Lord. And then in verse 4, it mentions that he went to Gibeon to offer sacrifices to the Lord. He offered a thousand burnt offerings. A thousand. So, we, we love the Lord. The love of the Lord caused him to give offering. And he didn't just give a little offering. He didn't say he did one burnt offering. He did a thousand. Amen. And then, out of those two things, God appears to Solomon in a dream. And by God appearing to Solomon in a dream, it showed that God was pleased with Solomon. He was happy. He was happy. And he asked Solomon in that dream, what shall I give you? Can you just imagine that God appears to you and God says, what shall I give you? But God that didn't appear, doesn't appear to us in a dream necessarily because his word, the Holy Bible, says every time it's telling us, what shall I give you? What shall I give you? Philippians 4 verse 19, and my God shall supply all my needs. It's God's 
telling us that all the time. Obviously in Solomon's day, that he didn't have the word like this. And so God appeared in the dream and asked him that. And so Solomon asked God in verse 9. He says, therefore give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people that I may be discern, able to discern between good and evil. Good and bad, for who is able to ju judge this by great a people? So he didn't ask for long life, and that's what God goes on to say. He didn't ask for long life, he didn't ask for riches, he didn't ask for um, victory over his enemies, he didn't ask for any of that. He asked for wisdom. And so God says, I've given you a wise and understanding heart. And besides that, I give you everything you didn't ask before. This is the thing that I want to highlight to you, is that, you know, when, when we ask God for something, that is why that scripture that says, seek first the kingdom, because when we ask in alignment with God's will, that all the other things that we didn't ask for, that God gives us anyway. Do not be worried about anything, because God will add that to you. And I just wanted to highlight to you, do you really know him? And Solomon was the richest person in his time. Now, if you talk about in his time, I want to convert that a little bit for you into today to, to illustrate and demonstrate to you how God blesses. And in, you don't have to turn to it, but in 1 Kings chapter 10, verse 14, it talks about how much gold Solomon received in just one year. One, one year. The Bible says he received 666 talents of gold. And I looked it up. There are some good Google that's worth something. So I looked it up. And 666 talents of gold equates to today 18,125 kilograms of gold. 18,125 kilograms. And obviously, wealthy being wealthy, I went and looked a little bit further to see how much gold is worth and how many, you know, how many, how much a kilogram of gold, etc. 20 billion rand. Solomon reigned 40 years. 800 billion rand. This is the God people that we serve. When God says He will bless us, that is how God blesses. And must remember that's just the gold. That wasn't all the other tributes that was paid to Him by others and other. It, that wasn't just gold. There was just one. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So the question is, is this possible for me? Is this possible for you? And that is what 1 John 5 14 says. It says, now this is the confidence that we have in Him that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. When the Bible says He hears us, that means He's given it to us. Amen. There's another key component that I also want to highlight um, that came later in Solomon's life. And I want you to turn with me to 1 Kings chapter 9. 1 Kings chapter 9. And I just want to reference verse 2 to 4 and verse 6. And this speaks to basically the part that I started out and I said, our service to God is not here and there, it's not hit and miss. It needs to be a daily, uh, a daily thing. We, we can't just, um, we can't just do it now and again. Chapter 9 and verse 2 says that the Lord appeared to Solomon the second time as he had appeared unto you at Gibeon. Remember at Gibeon, God asked Solomon, what do you want? 
this time God is appearing the second time now. As, I'm, as I've read this passage of scripture, it has led me to believe that God understood what Solomon was going to face. And that is why the warning, this is actually a warning that God is issuing. And this is the same warning that we get. And as it goes on in verse 3, it says, And the Lord said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and thy supplication that thou hast made before me. I have hallowed this house which thou hast built to put my name there forever, and mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. And if thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked, in integrity of heart and in uprightness, to do according to all that I have commanded thee, and will keep my statutes and my judgments. And then in verse 6, it says, But if ye shall at all turn from following me, ye or your children, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods, then I will cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them and this house. So you see, what I'm trying to show you here is that the part where that I keep saying serving God is a daily, daily thing. It's, we, it's something you're doing. It's like you read every day. That is how you serve God. That was what God was saying to Solomon. He was saying to him, he could see this is coming. He was warning him. He was saying, keep my commands. Walk before me as David walked in integrity of heart and in uprightness. And to do according to all that I have commanded you. Keep my statutes. Keep my judgments. You see, then God says, but if you don't do that, I will take away the blessing from you. And that is what, if you read later on into Kings, that is exactly what happens. Solomon had 700 wives. By that, boggled my mind with 300 concubines. <laughs> a thousand women in his life. But it's just, just madness. And do you know what happened? God had said to the Israelites, <coughs> do not go and marry the foreign women. Don't go and marry women from other tribes because they will lead you away from me. And that's exactly what happened to Solomon. These women introduced him to their gods, and Solomon actually went and worship these, these gods. And God, look at what, that's what I said to you. He was blessed by God. 20 billion rand a year. And he says, ah, ah, I'm going to leave. We, when we ask God, when we ask God, it needs to be with kingdom focus, number one. Amen. You must believe that God will answer you. You must. Yes. Your asking must be motivated by your love of God. Amen. When you give to God, because when you're asking God, you have to give. The measure that you ask is the measure that you must give. Amen. Therefore, give your best yes. and you will get the best. Amen. 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 Key is you must continue to serve God according to His word. Yes. You must keep His commandments at all times. Amen. And so I want to end by reading you again Matthew chapter 7 and verse 8. In fact, I want you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 7 verse 8. But this time I'm going to read it to you from the Amplified Version. And I think it is very appropriate in terms of what it says, in terms of how we ask. Amen. It says, For everyone who keeps on asking, receives. Amen. For he who keeps on seeking, finds. And to him who keeps on looking or knocking, it will be opened. We need to 
keep on. We need to keep on. Don't come one day, God, please, can you do this? Every day, we have taught in this church, you ask once. But every day thereafter, thank God, because He has blessed you with that which you must ask. Hallelujah. So let us keep being obedient to the word of God in our giving this morning and we will receive. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.
Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. Then you say, if I give uh, every, if I give every Wednesday, 15 rand, 15 rand. We did a week. I have 150. Multiplied by four Sundays, four weeks. That's about 450. That money you put aside, you've even changed it into 50, 50, 50. We pray for it. So that every time we have a service, we just pick that offering and place it. So offering time, we don't just offer money and just whatever is available. There must be that order. When God begins to see order in the way you do things, then God will add more. Hallelujah. That's how I do myself. The man I've just put the this has to come from. Amen. Hmm? Amen. I said, hmm. Amen. I said, hmm. Now prepare your offering. Thank you, Jesus. You know, people plan their time. People plan their time. I know one woman, she never lacked data every day, but often she lacked. Lift your right hand if your offering is ready, they will give you an envelope. If it's tight, you put tight and then you put your name.